Hello, my name is Charles Shear. I'm the Vision Science Consultant for Burtec Corporation, and we're bringing you another in the series of videos on the clinical uses of the BBT instrument. Today we want to discuss vision motion sensitivity and how the BVT's backgrounds can be used to reduce that, particularly with modulating contrast of these backgrounds. Vision motion sensitivity is a disturbance that negatively affects a subject's vision and balance. This can occur after concussion, strokes, and traumatic brain injuries. This is frequently due to a mismatch between the subject's peripheral vision, central vision, and the vestibular system. In other words, the pieces of the puzzles just don't quite fit together or become disconnected. The magno, or peripheral vision system, is our motion detection system. It becomes hypersensitive and out of sync for many patients. This sends confusing information to the vestibular and central vision systems, sometimes overwhelming and overloading them. This is particularly true when it is a high contrast or fast moving stimuli, such as in driving. Loud noises, confusing sounds, the type of ambient lighting, and even patterns on the floor may also have a negative effect in processing of all this visual information. Severe mismatches and overwhelming stimulation of these three systems may cause the subject to lose balance and even fall. Our challenge as clinicians is to get those pieces to fit back together again in the right way. The BVT has a unique way of reducing contrast to the peripheral stimuli and then gradually reinducing more contrast to the subject, helping them cope with this in very small steps. Of all the programs on the BVT instrument, the one that's best for working with VMS is the peripheral mode. And as always, the best place to start is by establishing a baseline for our patient. We start with a black background and a green target. And just a quick reminder, if you have any questions about what an individual option box does, you can just click on that eye icon for more information. But we're going to select a target size to medium and the sensitivity to large. And for this demonstration, we're only going to use the touch mode. As they adapt and get better at this, then we can add balance and even combination into this. But you do need to be careful not to add too much too soon. It's because these are strong vestibular stimuli and could induce a fall risk. For this demonstration, we'll also set the time to 15 seconds instead of the normal 30. And here's when we first start to begin to use the unique focus zone box. We're going to set this focus zone size to small, and that'll keep the targets all within the central 30 degrees. And next, we'll set the distribution to 100%, which will put all the targets within that focus zone. Now when we start the test, all the targets are in the central or magnocellular part of their vision. There's no peripheral stimuli either to distract them or disturb them. Next, we'll set the target distribution to 50%, placing half the targets in the central vision and the other half in the peripheral vision. This gives us the second baseline, which shows us what happens when the central and peripheral vision systems are interacting. Then the fun begins. Then we'll add a high contrast motion background to see what happens with the patient. When we add these motion backgrounds, you want to be careful that they don't fall. So you may want to use a harness depending on the patient. And of course, we can change the directions and speed of the OKN stripes. Just hit the reverse button. And in another video, we'll show you how to modulate the speed instead of contrast to help the patients adapt. 
But for this baseline, we'll set the contrast to 100% and the default setting for the speed. Notice how difficult this is, even downright disturbing, even though you have a normal intact visual system. What makes it difficult is that the eyes are trying to track the stripes to the right and then make a saccadic eye movement back to see them uh, to the left, all the time while trying to track the target itself and touch it with their hand. Next, I would like to demonstrate this effect with the optic flow or concentric OKN stripes. Notice how fast the stripes appear to be moving at full contrast. And now note how the perceived speed and the amount of stress that's induced lowers by lowering the contrast. This is at 10% contrast. And of course, the starting point for the patient will depend on the severity of their VMS. And now we'll increase this up to 30%. And then up to 50%. Notice how much faster it seems to be going. And then we'll move it up to 75%. And I'm going in large increments or jumps just to demonstrate this for you. Of course, with the patient in the real world, these increments may be much smaller. And then we'll show you back up to 100%. And notice as I slide the slider, it seems to slow down. And when I bring it back, it seems to go faster. This can be done with sports-related videos, driving scenarios, or even the grocery store. The more movement, the more contrast in the periphery the more valuable this training is. This concept or technique can be applied to any video with similar effects. The key points I'd like you to remember from this video are that reducing peripheral stimuli gives the illusion of slowing things down. And secondly, that training with low contrast peripheral stimuli, then gradually increasing the contrast as the patient adapts, may be useful in reducing VMS symptoms. Well, thank you once again for watching this video. We hope you found it useful, and please join us for other videos on the clinical uses of the BBT.